Hi guys, how are you? It's Megan and Poppy. Oh my gosh, hello, greetings in Finland from Boston. And hi, Pippa's mom. It says, hello, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I'm having a great day. I'm getting organized with my babies and I thought I would come on and groom them and chat with you guys and see what's going on with you and your Yorkies. Poppy wanted to be the first one today, so she's my first Yorkie that I'm going to groom. Um, a few minutes ago, I'm not sure exactly what happened, um, but I heard a squeal and it was Alfie. Um, I think the cat might have been trying to play with him and he finally told the cat that he didn't want to play with the cat. So it was very eventful. Don't know exactly what happened, but Alfie was shaking afterwards. He appeared to be totally fine, but I think he might have finally had enough of Simba trying to play with him. So anyway, that's our that's our big eventful thing here in my household. Natalia, thank you so much for joining us. You're in Tennessee. That's so cool. Um, and Bailey's button, it says hi to you and your babies. Hello back to you and your babies. Um, and Carla, hello, Carla. It says we welcome Cece, our baby Yorkie daughter, April 3rd. That's so exciting. There's nothing better than being a Yorkie mom or dad. I think they're so much fun. Um, of course, I love my Siberian kitten as well, but I think he just thinks he's another Yorkie. He does not know that he is not a Yorkie. I'm gonna see, oh, you guys can see Poppy. She's such a good girl. Hey, Lola. Lola's allergies have been bothering her a lot, so she's coughing a little bit over there. It's okay, Lola's. It is super, super, super hot in Boston today. Um, it's been like 90 to 95 every day of this week and super humid. So we've been waiting until as late as possible to go out and walk and stuff. Um, they also put pesticide down in the park this week, which was a real bummer. Um, they had signs up for one day to be careful, but pesticide stays around for longer than that. So I've been keeping the dogs off of the grass and just walking them on the, um, how do I say it? Walking them on the pavement and then just like washing their feet as soon as they get in. Cause I don't want my babies to get sick. They definitely don't need that. Um, Karen, hello. Karen says, good afternoon. I just got my New Yorkie, 12 weeks old. Her name is Poppy. Oh, that's so cute. So it's Poppy with an I and mine is Poppy with a Y. I love that. Lisa, how are you? It's nice to see you. It says hello to all of you. Hope you're having a great day. Um, Tiffany says, hello, Megan and fur kiddos. Hi, Tiffany. How are you? It's nice to see you on here. Um, oh, Carla, I'm so excited for you. I'm sure she's super beautiful. That is awesome. Oh my gosh. Karen says very hot here. 97 today. It is so hot and it's so hot for the babies. So I've been taking them out like just before 8 PM every evening and just walking as slowly as I can around the park. Um, and I think that's what they want to do too, because it's so hot that they just like can't go too crazy with their walking. Um, so we've been staying inside a lot the past few days. Yesterday I went to the gym and it felt like I was in a sauna on the way to the gym. Um, so anyway, just being careful with the dogs. I'm sure you guys know to be careful with your Yorkies. Um, they're so little and they're so close to the heat. So it's awfully easy for, for them to overheat and things like that. So I'm just always really careful with it. Like Saturday night, um, I took the dogs on a walk after work because there's no way that Skylar could take them for a walk when she was here from like 12 to five. It was just going to be too, too hot. Um, wow. It's that hot. And you're in Minnesota, Karen, that is crazy. 97 is definitely unbearable for sure. Um, Pippa's mom said, glad they at least let you know they put treatment out at the park. Um, so Pippa's mom, yes and no. Here's the funny thing. I just want to share a picture with you guys. Sorry, I have my cell phone right here. Um, so I went out and I was walking. I'm trying to figure out how to get to all my photos. I'm not that good at using my phone. I went out and I was walking around the park and the park where I live is like a very big park. And there were, there's huge, huge amounts of grass and they had these little teeny tiny tiny signs they're about the size of the post of a post-it note and they had like one or two per area and it just says caution pesticide application and keep off grass um but you know they took them down after 24 hours which 
honestly, there's no way that the pesticide is gone that fast. Um, and there, they were just so small that I felt really sad that day because I saw a lot of people and animals on the grass and I wanted to just like walk around the park and keep warning people. Um, just because obviously pesticide is so, so, so bad. Um, or pesticides are so bad. But um, yeah, I think that in this day and age, we should all be using something healthier because there's really no reason to put people and animals at risk by using something, um, you know, super dangerous. I know it's more expensive to use good things, but I think for the illness and and things like that, um, you know, it's, it's not a good thing. I will say I gave my dogs, um, or I've been giving them some activated charcoal, just a teeny, teeny, tiny bit um, every morning when they wake up the past week, just because I did feel like they got a hit of pesticides from walking on them before I realized that they were walking on them. Um, so anyway, that's what I've been doing to try to counteract it. Um, and hopefully it will make it a lot better because the first day after, even after I washed the dogs, um, Lola, I got out of the shower and I looked and she was like shaking on the bath mat. So I don't think it was good for her. She's super sensitive to stuff like that. But other than that, everybody seems like they're doing really, really well. Um, Kizzy, definitely check out the links on the video. I've got links to the shampoo and the conditioner that I use on their hair. Um, guys, if you're ever looking for something, I usually just copy and paste my like favorite master links because I get a lot of the same requests and I love to share my favorite products with you guys. Um, and you'll be able to find those things most of the time right on Amazon. So if you go into the description of this video, um, it should have the, at the links to everything that you need. And if you don't see something that you need, please let me know about that as well. I agree, Pippa's mom. Um, I, I just thought it was so bad that they marked it so poorly. And this is also a very major city. Um, so I was just really surprised that they would do that. I've learned so much about chemicals the last few years and I'm constantly learning more, but I avoid them whenever possible as well as for my pets. So um, considering it's in the park that's across the street from my house, I wish they had just sprayed something healthier. Um, but just managing it as best I can. It's supposed to rain today. Um, I think it's rained one other time. And I think by two rains, it should be, I, I think it should be pretty safe. I'm still going to continue to wash their paws when they get inside. But, you know, all we can do is do our best, right? Because there's so much stuff Um you know, there's so much stuff in the, in the world that's not good for all of us. So I just try to manage it and, of course, do a little detox for my dogs because they're just so little. I know that their bodies can't handle very much bad stuff. Um, so someone's asking me, um, it's, it's my, I think it's my Lynn is how I say it. Um, you're asking me about... Uh, tick and flea prevention, um, I would check out the website of um, Dr. Dobius. It's Dr. Dobius, D-O-B-I-A-S. He's got some great natural prevention products for that that I use. Um, see if it's something that would work for you as well. I really like them and I try not to use anything that um, I just feel like if it's going to kill an insect, it's probably eventually going to kill my dog too. I'm a very natural alternative person whenever possible. Um, hi, Jessica. How are you? Um, Jessica's asking, what are some good treats for Yorkies? My dog is so picky. Um, I would check out, I know I recommend this book a lot, but there's a book called um, The Truth About Pet Food. And I would really see the companies that she recommends. She's got some awesome companies on there. Um, she does so much research on what foods are healthy. So I would look for some treats on there for your dogs. Um, if you can't find something that you like, then I would make homemade treats for them. Um, most of the commercial treats are going to be just like full of preservatives. Um, this is kind of a side note, but I am really, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, I'm really sensitive to mold. And um, so just on the subject of preservatives, um, my husband brought me a cookie from Whole Foods and um, I ate it and had a stomach ache instantly. So I looked at the ingredients just to see what's in the ingredients, you know, for their cookies, that is not something that I would usually use, like what gave me a stomach ache. So this ingredient called citric acid popped up. And when I looked and did a little research on citric acid, you guys would not believe what citric acid is made from. 
Um, it used to be made from citrus, which would be the normal thing that you would think they would make it from. But then they found that it was cheaper to make it from black mold or aspergillus mold, which is actually the, the mold that made me sick in the first place. Um, so it, uh, it said that, you know, you shouldn't have a problem with it unless you're sensitive, unless you're very sensitive to mold. Um, and I just thought it was kind of a funny thing because, I mean, why would you possibly make a food product come from mold? I just don't want that at all. So I've been really avoiding it. It's in almost all the commercial hummuses. It's in a lot of different things. So um, if you're really into health, look out for that one. Sorry that that dog question just reminded me of it, but I never would have known what that preservative was. Um, and I don't think it's probably good for any of us. Bailey's Button says, it was hot in Central Valley, California. We don't walk until almost eight at night. Exactly. I mean, even in the morning, the sun is just so strong. So I can't really do morning walks right now either. Um, I feel like even if I were up and out at six, which I'll be honest, is probably never going to happen with me. It's okay, Poppy. It's okay, honey. It's okay. Um, even if I were to be up and out at six, I think it would still be too hot because the sun is just beating down right now and it's really strong. Um, my my weather on my phone, it's I think it's 90 outside right now. It's okay, honey. Come here. You want to sit up for a minute? Come here. My um, my weather on my phone says it's 90 right now, and it keeps saying that it's going to be 75 in one hour. I don't think that's possible, but we'll see. I'll check my phone in a little while. It's not raining yet, um, so maybe if it rains, it will cool things down enough, but I'm, I'm kind of hoping it rains after we can get our walk in around 8, just so the pavement's not super wet because my dogs do not like that. Um, Kizzy, absolutely. That book or, or that uh, shampoo and conditioner um, that is on there, I've got a few choices and I think that that should be helpful for you. Um, the Isle of Dogs is one of my favorites and you'll see the link right to it. Bailey's Button says, do not use Brevecto for Yorkies. It made my Yorkie very sick for three weeks. Um, Bailey's Button, not that I'm allowed to give probably any kind of medical advice, but a um, it wasn't that exact product that made Teddy sick, but it was a similar product um, that kicked him into his auto. It's okay, honey. I've got to finish brushing you. That kicked him into his autoimmune disease. Um, if you, Bailey's button, if you want to set, I'm trying to think of how I can contact you because I, I, I hate to, I don't want to slam any products online, but I will say that I do agree with you. Um, and um you can look into, so right now I'm giving, I'll just tell you what I'm doing for my dogs and, you know, you research it and see if it's something that you ever might want to do. Um, but those things do live in your dog system for an awfully long time. So I have actually been buying products for myself. I'm still, um, <laughs> I, my stuff kind of ties into why I'm so passionate about keeping my dogs healthy, but um, I'm still doing a cleanse for myself and I've been doing a cleanse from this company. It's called um, Microbe Formulas. Um, so Microbe Formulas is for people, but I've been listening to their, there's like a learn section on their website and quite a lot of people um, are supplementing their dogs with some of these things. Um, so I have been giving, there's something called bioactive carbon and I've been giving a very, 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 very tiny amount of that to my dogs for a little cleanse to work on some of the pesticides and getting some of the past flea, um, flea and tick ingredients out of their systems. So just in case that's something that you want to look into, um, Bailey's Button, it's called Microbe Formulas and it is a human website, but they're just going to tell you the way that I do it. I take the, um, I don't know if you know this, but you can actually open a capsule up. So I really, really gently twist open the capsule and I just put a very small amount of it into a ramekin with a a little bit of water, pick it up in an oral syringe and I shoot it into the dog's mouth because they've been exposed, they were exposed to mold and all this stuff. So anyway, I do a lot of extra stuff for my dog's health, but I've learned so much about human health too. And obviously the best way to keep your health is I guess to do all the things you can do to avoid getting sick. So I've, I learned a lot based on Teddy getting sick. Um, so should that help you with your dog? Just thought I would share that with you. Um, but I do agree with you about that product. Um, Jill says you're getting your 10 week 
Yorkita Saturday. And then and you want to thank me for the tips that I've given you. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. That's so sweet of you. And I'm so excited for you to get your Yorkie. You must be so excited. Um, Bailey's Button says, I think it's best to treat fleas as needed. Um, I agree with you, Bailey's Button. I think that there's a lot of health stuff where we are repeatedly treating different issues when we don't have them. Um, and I think that exposing yourself to things that you may or may not need can be stressful on the body. So I do agree with you. Um, I've been really happy with the Dr. Dobius um, natural cures and um, preventatives. Um, and if you read, it's really interesting to hear what he says about um, about a lot of the different, you know, commercial commercial things that they have too. Um, you know, when I was younger, I really never questioned any of it until I wound up with an autoimmune disease myself. And with with people, a lot of times, um, what can kick you into an autoimmune disease is when you are just exposed to too many bad things. So it could be just a long, long list of like heavy metals, mold. I work as a hair colorist, so I've been inhaling chemicals for 21 years now. Um, you know, all, all different things, pharmaceuticals, all that stuff. And it really, really adds up in your body. Um, and so the good thing is that sometimes you can reduce some of those flare ups and things like that simply by taking some of that stuff back out of your body. Um, and same thing, I believe with dogs, um, it's kind of a big process. I would say the one thing is just to be very, very, very cautious if you ever do um, decide to do something like that with your dog and learn a lot about it from a human perspective as well. Because um, if you work on getting out some of those harmful things, they can you can re-experience them on the way out. So uh, slow, slow, slow is the way to go. And don't overdo it if you're ever trying to do something like, you know, teensy tiny amounts of, of a binder and things like that. If you ever want to work on pulling some of the toxic stuff out of your, your puppies. You want to get down, Poppy? You want to go and cough a little bit? It's okay. You can have a good cough. She's trying not to cough a lot. I think she knew she was on, on TV, if you will. Come here, Alfie. Um, Alfie did something really, really naughty yesterday, you guys. So I took a shower, got out of the shower, and I put my foot in my slipper, and it felt wet inside my slipper. And I think that someone, and I know it was Alfie, definitely peed in my slipper. So this guy is, he's pretty naughty. <laughs> he's so cute, but he's so, so, so naughty. Um, I don't know. Are, do you just need to wear pampers all the time? He's a little bit naughty and he's been marking on my stuff again lately. It's probably my fault, but I just love him so, so much. Bailey's button. I think you'd, I, I think you'd be really impressed. So that company, um, I bought a few things initially from microbe formulas and, um, it's, I had just, it's like a big untangling thing when you're trying to get your autoimmune stuff under control. And so I had developed another issue, let's say a couple of months ago, and I wound up finding that company. And at first I just started with a few of their products and it's, they've been really amazing. So anyway, love, love that company. Um, been feeling a lot better, still have some stuff to work on, but, um, I think you'll be interested if you look at their website. Um, the products are awesome, awesome quality. Um, hi Dora. How are you? Thanks so much for saying hello. It says, hello. I love your videos. My Yorkie has one, has one year old. How often do you recommend the vet cleans my pet's teeth? Um, I feel like Dora, that's probably up to your vet. I mean, better that the vet decides on a teeth cleaning schedule than I do. Um, my, my dogs usually get their teeth cleaned. It's, it's supposed to be every year and I feel like it's every year and a half. Um, so I would say probably around every year, but your vet would definitely be the one to, to give you the best advice on that one. Um, I do know, you know, same thing, having clean teeth is important to your health because if you don't have clean teeth, I think it can be hard. I hear a noise. Is it, maybe is it rain? What is that noise that I hear over there? It's not, oh, it's, it must be Poppy. She's, she's rubbing. I was just like trying to figure out what I heard. Poppy's around the corner doing something. Are you okay, Poppy? I think she's okay. She's probably just ruining her hair. Sometimes she likes to like rub her ponytail out. 
Hold on one second while I just look over here. You're there. Oh, were you scratching under the couch? Is that where you are? Okay, perfect. I'm back guys, sorry about that. Just wanted to make sure everybody was okay because she was, oh, you look fine. Were you just scratching under the couch? We just wanted to make sure you were okay. That's all. Um, <laughs> so Karen said, would you recommend something for the chewing on things? And me, her teeth are so sharp. Yes, you definitely don't want to get in the habit of your dog chewing on you. Let me just see my toy basket is behind me. I'll show you what my dogs like to chew on. Karen, if you remind me, um, when this video goes up, if you remind me in the comments, I can link to this. But these are really nice little puppy-sized bones. Um, they can't break them down. I will say I went through the, the toy basket this week, and I threw out any of them that were not in perfect, perfect shape. So I usually have a lot of them, but this one was kind of, um, you know, it was kind of on its way out. Um Anyway, these are great. So I can look, I just have to look up to see the brand of um, bone that they are, and then I can give you the information. But I would definitely have something um, that they're attracted to that they want to chew on because you'll wind up getting your furniture ruined and it will absolutely hurt if they're chewing on you. Let's see if I can turn up the brightness. Sometimes my computer adjusts itself a little bit. Bailey's button um, says, does your Yorkie itch a lot? I think Bailey has some allergies. Um, what are, what kind of food does, um, does your pup Bailey eat Bailey's button? Um, I think that would be my, my first question. Is it eating, is, um, it fresh food or kibble? Um, what's the food situation? Um, Lola used to itch a lot. Um, and it's when we had mold in our house. So she kept getting fungal skin infections and it actually did turn out to be an air quality issue. Um, once we moved out of our apartment, she completely stopped having the skin issues that she was having. So it was kind of an interesting thing because it was really just based on, um, you know, based on that. So it sounds like that food is super good. So the food, I mean, really the food can't be the culprit. Um, it's so funny. I think, honestly, Bailey's Button, I really think that my my human stuff that's gone wrong with me has given me a lot of insight into dogs. Um, I know it sounds so funny, but especially as you were just talking about the product that made Bailey sick and things like that, um, I usually so if it's not if it's not really a food allergy, um, and if there's no way that there was any water damage in your home that wasn't you know cleaned up, and you have your you know your AC. Um, another big part of like where mold can be that people don't know about is if you don't clean out your ductwork super thoroughly, um, a lot of people have mold inside the ductwork of their home and they just don't realize it. It's a place where a lot of dust accumulates and things. Um, so that's, that's a good thing to look at as well. But I think a lot of times that working on things kind of like what I'm doing with my dogs now to lower the toxicity of their bodies actually helps with itching and, and things like that. Um, I never knew about all of this until, you know, I had my health issues because most human doctors don't talk about that and definitely no vets talk about it. Um, but I will say from my standpoint that Yorkies have such teeny tiny bodies and it's definitely not beyond the realm of um, possibilities. Excuse me while I cough. <coughs> it's definitely not beyond the realm of possibilities to think that, you know, with their little tiny bodies, they can pick up a lot of, um, you know, cleaning products from the ground or pesticides that are outside that we have no idea about. Um, and then when they get vaccines, they get a full huge size dose that would be given to a lab or to a Yorkie. So I think there's a lot of buildup in their bodies. And, and that's my guess why they have so many skin problems because they're just so little um, and they have more like skin area per se than a human does. So they have more of an opportunity um, for the size of their body to absorb toxins as it's a really easy way to absorb them through the skin. And then of course, when they eat. Um, so feel free to message me if you want. I can, 
I, I can send you the link, but it's definitely worth listening to some of those episodes on that website um, and maybe even joining one of their weekly episodes and asking them about cleansing for pets because I think things like that can really help with skin issues, itching and allergies. Um, a lot of times the thing to kind of like unlock better health for our pets and for ourselves is um, kind of functional and inside of you and sort of writing some things that, you know, we would never know we're going wrong, but if you can write those things, then you can hopefully also avoid some other really serious health stuff in the future. Um, I try to share a lot of my health stuff because it has made such a big difference for, um, for me and my pets. And I found that more people, um, have been affected by things like I have than I thought. So I'm assuming more pets have as well, because if the people are being affected, then certainly their pets must be affected as well. Um, so anyway, it's really good to know and it's nothing super hard to do. Um, it's not really expensive. It doesn't take much time, but um, I wasn't, I hadn't been super good about doing it for my pets and I've been so focused on myself, but I did notice like, since I started giving Lola the, um, the carbon binder, um, her ears have been standing up super straight. And I always know that that's a sign of her feeling better. Um, before I did it, I, I found her on the stairs and she was kind of slumped over like that. And I just, you know, when you just know that your pet's not feeling good. So anyway, I'm just doing the little things to, um, to help a lot with that. I hope that that helps a little bit. Um, Karen says, I have one like that. She likes, it's, she likes it. Some things. Yes. I don't let her chew on furniture. I distract her with other toys. I think that's a really good idea. Um, I usually try to distract the cat too, because every once in a while he does, um, he does bite not hard. He gives, I call them love bites, but, um, I do try to distract him with a toy or something like that because I don't like it when he bites me. He's, he's back there in his, his chair right now. So there's this beautiful modern chair in my window. Hi, Poppy. What are you doing, honey? Um, and he just likes to sit there and um, get sun and things like that. He's so cute. You got a little tangle, Alfie. So um, I know some of you guys know I share, I share Alfie. I own him. He's mine, but he was given to me by the breeder that um, that I've gotten all my dogs from, and um, she's allowed to borrow him back every once in a while, um, which is always really hard because I don't ever like to be separated from him. But she asked me if she could borrow him in the next few months because she has, you know, the perfect match for him. So Alfie is going to be a dad again. Um, I did ask her if there's any way that I could just bring him back for the day with my husband and maybe just make it a really, um, make it a really long day or something. Cause I really hate to be away from him. He's my little baby, even though he's a troublemaker and he sometimes does pee on my slippers and things. I still love him and I don't think he really likes to be away. So I think we're going to work it out where, um, he can just go for an afternoon and he can make his puppies. So I actually met the dog that is going to be the mom when I was, visiting the breeder the last time and she's super, super cute. Um, but she has so much hair. So I feel like whoever has to brush these puppies that come from Jazzy and Alfie, they are going to be, I mean, just so, so, so hairy. Um, when the, I mean, I know the puppies won't be born for a long time, but when they are, I'll definitely, I'll definitely share a picture. I never share who she is just because, um, you know, she wants to have her privacy and things like that. But um, she's a lovely lady and I've become really good friends with her. Someone said, Oh, you're a really good PR person for the breeder. But I said, well, not really because I don't share, <laughs> I don't share who she is because I'm not trying to sell puppies, but anyway, fun, still fun to chat about and, and such. Um, my Lynn says, how's the cat doing with other dogs apart from Alfie? Um, thanks for asking. That's so nice of you, my Lynn. Um, I would say he's doing pretty well. I think he figured out that Lola does not have any teeth. And ever since he figured out that Lola does not have any teeth, he's really trying to play with Lola now. 
Um, I don't know that Lola loves that. I think she she liked it when the cat was afraid of her. And Simba is not afraid of Lola anymore. So I was making a stir fry in the kitchen the other night. And I saw, I don't know if any of you guys have cats, but when he wants to play, he like raises up his back and he kind of looks like a rocking horse. And I peeked around the corner and Lola was just in the hallway, not wanting to come down the hallway. So she's... Um, I think she likes him, but he's he's a really, really sweet cat, but he's 10.5 pounds and Lola is five pounds and sometimes he like jumps on her. So I don't think I would like that. Um, I'm, I try to play with him a lot to tire him out um, so that he gets out his energy and, you know, and he doesn't jump on her too, too much, but I can totally see why Lola would get a little bit exasperated at having a, a cat that's like three times her size jump on her. Um, and then Poppy just doesn't really have much to do with him. So he's kind of on his own a lot. I I don't think that anyone dislikes him. I'll show you guys a picture. Like they do, um, they do, you know, hang out together a little bit. They don't hate each other, if you will. Um, they just don't love each other either. It's somewhere in between. So this was yesterday, though. I think he just thinks he's another dog. He really doesn't realize that, you know, he's he's not another dog. Um, oh, by the way, I know I told you guys that I was thinking of getting a different step stool for behind me. Um, if you look next to my bar stool, I finally got a prettier step stool because the cat uses it to get up on the on the bar stool so that he doesn't um, claw it with his little claws. And I think it's beautiful. It just like matches my apartment. So now I don't feel like I need to move it when I'm trying to film for YouTube, um, which is really, really nice. Um, I just have to show you guys something really funny. So yesterday, this was the cat. This is how he sleeps. I mean, who sleeps like this? He's so, so funny and he's so relaxed. So he's he's really enjoying being a part of this crew. I think he likes to be part of our family. Um, still a little bit rambunctious, but all puppies and all kittens are a little bit rambunctious for sure. So basically everyone's getting along well. They're not quite best friends as I was hoping, um, but they tolerate him. And um, I think as he gets older, and hopefully is a little bit more gentle, they'll tolerate him a lot better. Um, sometimes I wish I had like another kitten for him to play with, but I just can't have any more animals. Um, I feel like my husband will like just <laughs> squeal out of here to get away from me if there's any more animals. So no more animals. Um, <laughs> Dora says, um, do my Yorkies have um, sensitive stomachs? Um, they do. I would say that all Yorkies have sensitive stomachs. Um, I'm very careful about not introducing any foods that they're not used to. Um, I don't feed them any, you know, fatty foods either because I don't want them to get pancreatitis. Um, and if I do make a food change, I usually do it really gradually. Um, I feed them just food for dogs. My shipment actually just came in today. Um, the box is in, I think it's actually just around the corner. It's maybe behind the couch or in the kitchen because I still have to unpack the food. It's in there with dry ice still. Um, Bailey's button, he's so, so funny. It's so funny to see. Um, my Lynn, isn't it funny? They're, they are hysterical to see together. Um, and they really, they do have fun. It's just, cats just play so differently. And I think it's for the dogs, they move so slowly. So they're like, why is that thing racing around and, you know, going so crazy about us uh, around us? So we were all sitting though. Everybody hangs out. Um, I sit on my couch and I edit a lot of videos. I've actually been working on a really long video, which is taking me a lot of editing. And it's, um, I did one about the laser facial that I, well, it's not a laser facial. It's just a laser treatment. So I did like a before and after about clear and brilliant laser and I've been editing it together, but it's so long. So it's taking me so, so long to edit. So everybody sits on the couch with me and they love it. Um, and it's just, I love our times at night when we get to, to relax and be a family together. Bailey's button said, um, have I ever fed my Yorkies seedless watermelon? Um, I have not. I'm, 
Uh, not they probably would like it. I've never read about whether watermelon is safe for dogs or not, but I'm assuming you've read about whether it's safe or not. Um, I usually just feed them their just food for dogs and things. I keep it pretty simple because the more simple that I keep it, the less chance that Lola will have an attack of her pancreatitis because um, she really has not had any attacks for so, so long. So I don't really introduce too many, too many new things, but it does sound like that would probably be um, an okay thing um, if it if it is safe for dogs, which I would just have to check out and stuff. Um, Karen says trying to brush her, she keeps trying to bite, but will take time, I guess. Um, I think so. Although, yeah, I mean, try some different positions and things like that. So I know that not all dogs will let you um, brush them the way that my dogs do. So sometimes if Lola is sort of biting and things when I'm trying to brush her, I'll flip her around the other way. So she's standing on all fours and she seems to tolerate that better on some days than others. So I just sort of like feel it out and see what she wants me to do. Um, obviously dogs have thoughts and feelings just like people do. So, um, you know, try out some different things and just do a little bit at a time. Make sure to use the bigger, more gentle side of, um, of the comb. Oh, Alfie's little eyes are closing. Did you get a little stressed out? Maybe you and the kitten had a fight today. Do you have a fight with your kitten? I know, it's okay. That was scary, wasn't it? I think the kitten scared him. <laughs> little Alfie, he's so sweet. Bailey's bun says, so sad. My Yorkie is always giving me these sad eyes when I'm eating, even though I just <laughs> fed him. I would definitely not even pay attention to those sad eyes. Yorkies are so smart. And I swear they just know, I mean, they know what it takes to get what they want. So don't ever feel bad not giving your Yorkie people food because boy, it sure can make them sick. And also you don't want a fat Yorkie because it's going to have so many, um, so many health issues. I hate to say it, but obesity isn't good for people or dogs. So everything that you can do to keep them slim and trim means, um, means that you'll have more days and years with them. And that's, that's a good thing. So, um, don't feel bad. <laughs> they are really smart with their sad eyes though. Um, I went to see my mother the other day and, I had my friend's daughter come and babysit the Yorkies for me. And so I had to decide who to bring. And I thought, well, Alfie always gets to go. And Lola seemed just a little bit under the weather the past, you know, week and a half or so. So I'm going to bring Lola. And I figured that if I brought Poppy, she would probably like get a little bit stressed out and act like I was taking her hostage. But then when I was leaving, um, Poppy was making the most sad little quiet cry whines. Um, and it was so hard not to break. She was like, uh. <laughs> so anyway, I get it. It's, they really, they really can make us feel, you know, kind of guilty sometimes. Right. Like I, I just didn't want to bring all of them because I really wanted to just concentrate on a nice little visit with my mom. And it was also another 90 plus degree day. So it was easier to just be able to take one so I could carry her with me and Lola had she had the best 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 day she still did by the way guys try to catch my mom's cat even though Lola has her own cat now did I not do a very good job I feel like your hair is kind of still sticking up um, but even though she now has her own cat it wasn't enough for her and she still wanted to catch my mom's cat which was pretty funny Karen says, yes, bite. She is only three pounds, so not much to brush. Carla says, the groomer today said that my puppy was agitated when she was being brushed. I brush her every day, so I was surprised, but maybe the groomer was rushing. Hold on one second. Um, how, how old is she again, Carla? Um, and how many times has she been groomed? Um, Bailey's button, <laughs> so funny, right? Um, she's only five and a half months old. Um, it's hard to say. I mean, I think going to the, if she went to the groomer, I will say, I think going to the groomer 
is a really stressful experience for dogs. I know that, you know, every single time that Lola went to the groomer, she got super, super stressed out. So, um, I mean, I don't think it would be unusual for, for a dog to be agitated at the groomer. Um, it's possible that, that they rushed. I mean, if you brush her out every day, she couldn't have had any tangles. Right. Um, so it should have been pretty easy for the groomer to brush her out. Um, did you think that the groomer seemed like a, like a gentle person? I guess those are all good questions to ask. Um, always follow your gut with groomers because if you don't think that they seem like gentle people, I probably wouldn't let them touch my dogs just because they have a lot of control in that they're around your dog when you're not. So you really have to make sure it's someone that you feel really, really good and safe with. I'd rather have a gentle person that doesn't do as great of a haircut than a rough person that does a great haircut because at the end of the day, I just care about how they treat my babies when, you know, when I can't watch what they're doing. I feel like judging by, I'm watching, there's a tree right outside my condo in Boston and it's, the leaves are flipping around, like they're flipping upside down, which usually means that the pressure is changing. My little brother taught me that from, he learned it from his meteorology class. And so it usually means that the pressure is changing and it's about to rain. Let's see, I think it's gonna rain within about 10 or 15 minutes. Let's see if I'm right, it's not raining yet. So she groomed your other baby, Carla. So, I mean, maybe your, your pup just gets stressed out and hopefully it will get um, less stressful for your pup next time. Did you guys go on a nice long walk beforehand just to get all the energy out and things like that? Um, I find that that really helps with nerves. And when you use up their energy beforehand, um, it makes it a lot better for sure. Hi, Morgan. How are you? Morgan says, hi, Megan. Love your videos. Thank you. It says, I get my Yorkie puppy in August and I'm so excited. How often do you brush your Yorkie's teeth now? Um, I try to be really good about it, but I do sometimes miss a day, Morgan. I would say five days a week, although I know that every single day of the week is much better. Um, I just have, I get like overloaded sometimes. So I try to do my best, but that's usually how often. Um, one of the things I will say I didn't think about when I got three dogs is, wow, there's a lot of different stuff to do. I'm sure everybody else would think of that thing, but I'm awfully busy taking care of these little babies. So once in a while, I do miss um, brushing their teeth. Are you ready to get down now or you want mama to hold you for a minute? What do you think? Oh, he's a good boy. This little guy is just so, so, so gorgeous. Um, do you guys want to see the the dog that's going to be the mom of his puppies? I'm not, don't worry. I'm not trying to like sell puppies or anything, but she's legitimately the cutest dog. I actually think she looks like Alfie. Like I would almost not know that it wasn't Alfie. Lola, come here. Come on, honey. Lola, come. Lola, come here. We got to brush you. She does not want to be brushed today. She's like, no, thank you. I feel like I'm dressed like a teenager today. I just want to be comfortable even inside. I feel like it's a little bit humid and everything. Um, I want to see if it, if it's saying anything about the weather, if it's changed at all. Okay. Now it's saying now rain. I don't see it yet, but apparently it should be any minute. Just waiting to see. Hmm. Not yet. I don't know why I'm so interested in the, in the weather today. Lola, look at this. This is my little spirit animal. I love Lola. Hi, so are you. You're a good boy too. I like it when you don't do your potties on things though. So this week is the week that Skylar is leaving. Um, we were supposed to go on, I was going to take her and her boyfriend out to dinner last night, but um she, her new job just made her do a training from, I think from like 5.30 to 7.30 at night, which is kind of crazy. So I don't think I'm going to get to say goodbye to her because that was really my time. I was going to say goodbye, but she's, um, her last day is Friday. Um, and my new gal, her name is Olivia. She's so, so nice. Um, I hope she works out for a long time. Um, the dogs love her. 
and Skylar's moving to New York City with her boyfriend. Um, so we are going to miss her a lot. I don't think I don't think the dogs have really realized it yet. Um, but they sure they sure are going to miss her. Um, I think it's going to be hard for her to say goodbye to the dogs. I did tell her that um, she's welcome to stay here. So she's going to have some meetings now and again back in Boston. Um, and I have a second bedroom. It's the cat bedroom. And I did tell her she'd have to probably have the cat bite her while she was trying to sleep, but she doesn't care. So anyway, I'll still see her. Not in the same way, but honestly, we she works when I'm not here anyway. So I do think she takes wonderful care of them, but we don't see each other all the time anyway, but I will miss her. So guys, um, I don't know who is on now, but if there's anyone on that hasn't said hello, please take the time to always love it when you guys check in and when you say hi and you let me know where you're tuning in from, um, if you have any questions or if you just want to say hello. Um, it's always great to hear from all of you guys. Um, I love my my live streams. I don't think I got on for a live stream yet, but last week I was went to see my mom and was doing all sorts of things. So I missed my live stream and I missed saying hi to everybody. It's always such a nice thing. Um, Jill says, Megan, which size of the sleepy pod for the car would you get for just one puppy? Um, gosh, I'm trying to remember, Jill. Um, what do the sizes of the sleepy pod, what weight do they say that they are good for? I'm sure there must be like a, a suggested weight. Um, what are the two sizes? Would you tell me? And then that should jog my memory and I'll probably be able to answer you. But um, it's been probably about four years since I bought my sleepy pod. So just need you to jog my memory if you don't mind. Oh, Lola, we just actually picked up our new car the other week, my husband and I. Um, so that is really nice. And we, of course, moved our sleepy pods into the car. Um, for anybody that doesn't know about sleepy pods, they actually are crash tested. Your dog is completely enclosed in the sleepy pod and they keep them really, really safe. I know a lot of people have snoozers. Um, I think dogs like those, but they're they're not crash tested. Um, and in the event of an accident, your dog definitely might not stay in there. So the sleepy pods are a lot safer than any of the other, any of the other, you know, car seats that are out there. I did a ton of research and I just love them. And I, I feel so much better when I put my dogs in there because God forbid that I do get in an accident. Um, they have, you know, the best chance of being okay in the sleepy pod and it's really comfortable for them as well. It's really ventilated and things. Um, Lola gets a little mad and smashes her face against the side of it, but it's good for her. Carla says, I think the mini was too small. I wish I would have gotten the one size up. So is it mini and regular, Carla? Um, I definitely don't have a small size one. It's it's not too small for them at all. Like if I wanted to, I could put two of my dogs in the one that I have. Um, so that's, that's the size that I have. Oh, it's, sorry. I'm like, what does that sound? It's my dishwasher draining behind me. Um, I have been doing all my own cooking again lots of healthy cooking. So I feel like I'm always running the dishwasher because I've been doing so, so, so much food prep, still doing all my fitness stuff and really, really getting into great shape again, which I'm so happy about, but boy, I feel like it's a full-time job. <laughs> it's, it doesn't happen easily. Um, it's not that I work out all the time, but food prep and making sure you eat your meals and stuff like that. It, it takes a while, but it feels so good when it really starts to pay off and you can finally see the visible changes. Very satisfying. Um, Jill says the more space, the better or better a snug fit so that the dog feels more hugged. Um, I like having more space personally. I didn't want them to feel claustrophobic in there. Um, so I would say more space. Carla, I definitely agree with you. Um, so Bailey's button, um, not sure because nobody told me um, what what the size choices were. But if there's two sizes, I would say I have whatever the larger size is. Um, same with a lot of people will ask me what size Quiggy Bow I have. I have the larger size Quiggy Bow. Um, my dogs don't like to be cramped up into a space. So I always just give them, you know, that extra space so that they feel comfortable and, and like luxurious and they like being somewhere. So I'm not sure of exactly what the two sizes are called, but I have 
whatever the larger one is. Um, Jill says, yes, two sizes, kind greetings from Switzerland. Ooh, Switzerland, I want to go to Switzerland so much someday. It looks so beautiful. What a neat place to be from. And thank you for sharing that information as well. Um, I love my sleeping pods and they're also really cool because if you're going somewhere, if you're going on a trip, you can, you can use it as a dog bed as, as well. And if you need to get your dog used to it, you can bring it into your home, take the dome cover off and just let your pet get used to it as a dog bed. Just let them get used to the smell, um, all of those things so that it doesn't seem super unfamiliar when you put them in this little like mesh dome in your car. Um, but I just think they're awesome. I can't believe that I drove around for so many years without something like that. That said, I also did not have my own car. Um, it would have been really hard if, you know, I used to rent cars or do zip car and that would have been really hard to put a sleepy pod into. So I feel like it's worth having a car in the city just so that my dogs are safe when I drive with them because um, it's pretty easy to get into a fender bender in Boston. So it's really good to have, um, you know, little, little pods for your dogs and, and things like that. It's so funny. So I just brushed everybody last night while we were watching, um, I think we were watching the show, The Flash, while I was editing videos. And I swear to you, it's like I never touched Lola with a comb. She gets so, um, so snarled so quickly. So it's amazing how I brush her. And then the next day, it's like nothing ever happened. Oh, you're so pretty. She's being really good. You are being so good to be brushed today. I love you. And her ears are so high. She looks so good. I wish you guys could see her right now. She's just beautiful. Yes, you are. You, you might be my favorite. I've had you the longest. Like, shh. They're all my favorites. Whenever, I, I don't know if this is true for any of you guys that have multiple Yorkshire Terriers, but I feel like whichever one you're holding at that moment is your favorite. Like you don't really have a favorite, but um, there are things about each one that make them your favorite. Come on. Um, I agree with you, Jill. They are awesome and they are nice to look at. Um, I do like things that are nice to look at. I like good design and um, it, it makes a difference. Like, I'm sure that you guys are like that as well. Like you choose the most, you know, pretty things for your home and pretty things for your dog. And it's so nice when something works well and it also looks pretty. So they, they fit right into our car. Of course, you know, we can never have people in the back seat, but nobody wants to be in the back seat of our car anyway. Um, Oh, by the way, I didn't even ask you guys, but what is it like in your part of the world? Um, Boston has really opened up a lot. Uh, there's people out. The The phone is ringing off the hook at the salon. Um, it's just really, really changed in the past few weeks. Um, I'm wondering, is it like that in your areas as well? Um, are people starting to do things again and sort of like live their lives again? Um, it feels really, really, really nice here. Um, so I was just curious what it was like in your neck of the woods and, and how things are feeling to you. I hope that you guys are in a place where things are looking up where you are as well. It's been, it has been a good year for me. I've had some good stuff happen, but definitely a long year sometimes too. So just wanted to check in and see how you guys are doing. Um, if it's nice where you are. We could have just do those little leggies. Gotta get those tangles out of this beautiful girl. Look at that. Her little feet are definitely, they are the part that if I, if, if I would not brush them, she would be so, so happy, but I do need to brush them. Christy says, I'm in Tennessee and we are open. I was so excited to not have to wear a mask to the um, nail or hair salon. Oh my gosh, Christy, I completely agree. So um, it's also been like that here. And um, when my clients came in, um, you know, some people did still, there were, some people still wore a mask. Most people were not wearing a mask um, and whatever anybody did was of course fine. But it was so nice to see my clients' beautiful faces. Um, I feel like everybody just looked extra beautiful to me. And 
people just didn't stop smiling. Um, it's been the same at the gym as well. And it's, you know, everybody is like, I guess the nice thing about it is like people are really smiling at each other. And I feel like there's like a real appreciation for seeing someone smile and someone's expression. Um, it's so funny though, because certain people you're like used to seeing them. There are some people that I've only ever seen with a mask on. And sometimes I was really surprised when I saw people's faces because I, I just didn't know what they looked like. So it was so funny. Um, Jill says, yes, same here. Vaccine makes things easier to open. Hope people keep minding their hygiene still. I do too, Jill. I completely um, agree with you. I think that hygiene is so important. And I think if there was, for me, at least in my business, if there was a good takeaway from this, it was really that this year, no one tried to come in sick. And that had been an issue sometimes in my business before. And um, it's just such a awful thing when someone does go out sick because, you know, you own a business and you very, I very, very much have never wanted to work on sick people. Um, you know, I'm a hairstylist, I'm not a doctor. And I would always send out emails asking people not to come in sick and they would still come in sick. So I did send out an email for the reopening and I just said, you know, a big silver lining of this past year was that we did not have anybody come in sick and we would really like to keep up that progress. So we do ask that people have the courtesy to cancel if sick. And I also included or, or if they have any symptoms, because I don't know if you guys have ever seen this when someone is clearly sick and they tell you, but I'm not contagious. And I'm always like, but how do you know you're not contagious? Like if you have all of the symptoms of being sick, how could you possibly know that you're not contagious? So I just said, if you have any symptoms or you're sick, please cancel your appointment. Um, and I actually said, um, if you do come in sick, we will send you home and ask you not to book another appointment. Um, I think that, that my, a lot of my clients actually thanked me for that. Um, because they also don't want to be around people that are sick this year. So, or ever, um, so I think if people just stay home more and have good hygiene, it will make a huge difference. Um, we're still using all of our air filters at the salon. Everything is super clean as usual. Um, we leave the window open for ventilation. Um, and, you know, we just do all the things we sanitize. So there's something called foam soap and it's actually a UV. It's like a little UV box and we sanitize everybody's um phones when they come in too, because phones can be really, really dirty. So those are the things we're still doing those things. And I think that they were great and positive changes. Um, but I do agree. I think hygiene will make a big difference with this and hopefully people, you know, just staying home when they're sick, you know, for maybe forever, that would be nice. Um, so those are my, my big things that I'm hopeful for still no rain guys. I guess I was wrong. The trees have stopped moving and I'm like hoping this rain will just get out of the way so it cools it down um, for us. It says it's raining. Maybe I can't see that it's raining. Hold on, guys. I'm just going to go look out the window and see if I'm incorrect. No, nope. my iPhone is officially lying. It says that it's raining and the pavement outside is completely, completely dry. Um, it did say that it's now... 88 degrees instead of 90 degrees. So it's getting a little bit cooler. I feel like the second that I would go outside, the skies will open up because I just blow dried my hair today and it's long and curly. So the second that I step outside, guaranteed the skies will open. I have no doubt. I agree, Jill. Um, common courtesy does go a long way. And I think that, you know, people used to think it was a good thing. I don't know why, but they thought it was a good thing to go to work and to do things when they were sick. And I think socially that's changed. So anyway, we'll see what happens, but I think it's going to be, Lola, I just need to finish your legs. I don't think she's very happy about that. Just want to get your legs so gorgeous. It's good for you. Um, so we'll see, but I'm, I'm happy to be open. We're still not, um, we're not filling up to capacity. I mean, we could, if we wanted to, but I think that that was another nice change too. 
Um, I've been keeping my, my staff separate, not having people work the same day. And for me, it's just a little bit more relaxing to work that way because I was managing so many employees the same day. Um, and sometimes certain people were fitting in more people than maybe fit in and things like that. Um, I always just work the same schedule. I never, you know, squeeze people in. So anyway, for me, it's been lots of positive changes. Um, hello, Christine. How are you? Christine says, hi. Hi, precious babies. Um, Lola says, hi. Maybe I'll just give Lola a little massage. I don't think she wants me to brush her anymore. I'm going to tilt this down so you guys can see her. Sorry, I have to look at my... I feel like I'm wearing these shorts. It's kind of a funny outfit, but it is comfortable. She just wants a little bit of a massage. You're such a good girl. I wish we could go outside. I wish it wasn't so hot today. Can you put your ears up and show everybody? It's so funny. I was just telling you guys how she's been putting her ears up and now she's holding them down. What if I say chicken? What? What's that? Can you put your ears up? She just doesn't want to. She's so funny. I don't know why she has them down, but well, guys, it's always so nice to see you. I'm just curious. Does anybody have any more questions? Anything that you guys have been thinking about with your babies? Um, I'm probably going to go and work on a little bit of video editing. I feel like this one video that I'm doing is going to take me probably a couple more hours to edit because there's so, so much in this one video. And I think I filmed a few takes because it was super, super bright. Um, but it's a pretty cool, hopefully people like it. It's a video on my uh, clear and brilliant laser. I've been wearing sun hats everywhere since I got my laser treatment. I don't know if you guys can, probably you can't tell the difference at all, but I feel like my skin looks better than it did before. So I guess that's all that's really important. I still have to do a few more treatments, but always got to work to keep the babies beautiful and me as well. You're beautiful. You're my best friend, aren't you? Well, it's always so nice to get on and chat with you guys. I really appreciate you guys coming to my story time live. Lola says hello. And uh, just in case I'm like, I know you guys love, um, I know that you guys love Yorkies, but I have to get my little Simba and show you guys. He's so beautiful. Are you dreaming, Simba? Come here, Simba. Come here, Simba. Can Simba come and sit with Mama? Look at this little kitty. What are you doing, buddy? You want to come say, oh, what a baby. What a baby. He is just the cutest little cat in the entire world. Um, he tracks so much litter through the house, though, and it's not on his paws. His tail catches litter in the litter box and brings it everywhere, which is so funny. Um, Bailey's button says, when I first got Bailey, he had both ears up, but now only one is up, wondering why. Um, that happened with Teddy's ears, Bailey's button. Um, usually you have to make sure to keep the ears trimmed. So if the hair on the ears gets too heavy when they're growing up, they haven't really formed yet and the ears can kind of fall down. So you might be able to fix that by trimming it. But I have to say it was also the cutest thing about Teddy. And I loved that he had one ear up and one ear down. Um, I believe that breeders also sometimes tape the ears to keep them up, but um, I think once they've fallen, it can be a bit hard to get them back up, but I would definitely ask the breeder what um, she or he thinks. Um, Jill says, hope this guy opens up for your hair and Yorkies. I'm going to have to check out and tank up on some sleep since I'll have my hands full with the puppy from Saturday house training and it's and so on. Thank you so much for coming, Jill. I'm going to leave in just a minute too, but it was really nice of you to join and I'm so excited for you. Um, Ida says, I keep missing your lives. So happy I could catch you today. Oh, thank you so much for coming, Ida. That was so nice of you. Carla, thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. It's always so nice to chat with you and I am so excited that you have your baby to love. You definitely deserve this and what a lucky baby you have. Karen, he's so sleepy. I love this little, are you a good boy? I know, you're a good boy. You're a good boy. He's just such a baby. I love this cat so much. Um, Christine Simba says, hi. He's so funny. He's like, mom, I want to go back to my chair. I don't want to be with you in your uncomfortable lap. This is not where I want to be. 
Bailey's button. I think it's so cute. That's how Teddy was. And I wouldn't have changed a single thing. Darkie, how are you? It's so nice to see you. Bailey's button. Thank you for your time. Thank you for coming to see me. You guys, it was great to see you. If you think of it, please hit the like button um, on your way out of the video. I always, I appreciate each and every one of you. It's always nice to chat with you. Thanks for your friendliness and kindness. I seriously have the best, best crew that joins me. So I'll talk to you guys later. Stay healthy and stay beautiful. Simba and all of the babies say goodbye. And I will talk to you guys really soon. Bye guys.